So now I will explain the four, essentially the four uh, steps in in the uh, DeepMind solution in more detail. So I've already kind of alerted to what they include. So the action now is where the, the players who has the turn, where they will put their next beat. The state is the current position of the game. And what we have to make this supervised learning solution is a large database of expert player moves. So now we train a classifier to imitate the experts. And we do that by having a network that has an input, the board position, and as an output gives this softmax probability for the different actions. And now we want to, uh, just as a classification problem, we want the network to put a high probability for the moves that the experts actually played. And we call this the supervised learning policy. So this probability of an action given a state is a policy uh, model. In the second step, now we have this uh, policy network and we can now uh, take that as a starting point and start letting uh, this policy network play against itself. And now we let them play until the game terminates and we record who is winning and who is losing. And now our update for this reinforcement learning policy network is as given by this equation. So you can see that again we have the derivative of the log probability of the actions. But now we multiply that by an additional plus minus one factor. So it's plus if the action that we have have here have actually led to a win and it's a minus if it's uh, if it's led to a loss so this means that we will enforce will make higher probability for the actions that actually uh, was turned out to be a winning strategy and make kind of depress strategies that led to a loss this turns out to give a stronger player than the supervised learning uh, player. But we're not done yet with this kind of system. We cannot, with the reinforcement model here, the policy model, we cannot win against uh, the world champion. We need to put some more, something extra juice into the system. And we do this by using uh, the fact that we can look ahead. So now we want to make an intelligent strategy of how to look ahead in the game. Because we have a lot of computer power, so we can actually afford to uh, unroll a, a lot of games. And the closer we are to the termination of the game, the more accurate will our policy networks be at uh, uh, predicting uh, good moves. And also, it uh, eventually we will also train an a value network and of course the closer we are to the actual termination of the game the more accurate this estimation is and this is kind of the reasoning why uh, behind why we actually need to search forward in the game why we need to roll out the game so we have the uh, we have now our reinforcement learning policy network we like it it works kind of well but we can now uh, try to say uh, can we use can we use some network model to actually find out what is the probability uh, that given that we play with our reinforcement learning policy that this will lead to a win against uh, another reinforcement learning uh, policy uh, network. So let's try to build now a third network that estimates this uh, value function. So remember that the actual, the true value function of the optimal player, this uh, 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 new star is not known and we cannot know it because it's just too expensive so we are trying to we hope that our reinforcement learner is uh, a policy uh, network is a good player and we also hope that actually with this uh, good player we get pretty close to having a value function that is, is the optimal one and it turned out that it's actually uh, probably not close to being the optimal one but it's good enough to beat the world champion it turned out uh, with a small modification of the system described in this nature paper. So the up to update rule now for the for the value network is that we adjust our value function such that it will mimic the actual outcome of the game. So you can see that the now C is this plus minus one, the outcome of the game. 
and we now want the net uh, the value network to to mimic that so probably what i said before about that the value network is is a, a number between zero and one is not true it's a number between uh, minus one and plus one and that number quantifies whether it will be white that wins or uh, black that wins yes so now we have uh, the reason why we actually want this is because if we now do this kind of play the game ahead then we can use this value function to evaluate how good the position we achieve when we play the game ahead is right and this we can use to eventually decide on what move we want to make so the, th the fourth move i'll not talk so much about that because it's kind of technical details but it's essentially a, a, a an intelligent way to do a stochastic uh, search and we use uh, we use the, eventually use the value network to decide which is a good uh, position to reach, uh, but we will use our policy networks to decide what, mm, what moves we will use. And what is really interesting here and also is an important aspect of reinforcement learning is that it turned out that the supervised learning policy network was better at generating proposals for moves than the reinforcement learning policy network and this is a little bit uh, like a paradox because if you think about it uh, why don't we use the reinforcement learning policy networks that's actually a better player so you can say that the the uh, supervised learning uh, policy network is not as good a player but it's a more imaginative player right so it explores the potential positions better than the reinforcement learning. The reinforcement learning is more certain about what kind of moves it wants to make, but then it's not kind of exploring the space as widely as the supervised learning. So this is a funny small uh, uh, caveat about this, and it also illustrates this kind of uh, exploitation, exploration uh, trade-off that we need in reinforcement learning. But eventually we'll use the uh, reinforcement learning value function to score the actual positions. So that was a walkthrough of the DeepMind system. So here's in the end an example. So you can see on the in the A subplot, we, we see a certain uh, position and we can see now that the value, this reinforcement learning value network uh, puts different probabilities of winning depending on where you put your uh, your next beat and it's it's black's turn to move and you can see that the value network assigns a probability of 54% uh, of winning if you put your beat uh, on this uh, position with the red circle. Now we can use uh, different strategies to make this tree so you can see in, in plot B and C are two different uh, strategies for making this tree and you can see at, uh, that after we have done this tree evaluation, then because we search the, the, the deeper into the game, we modify our probabilities. So you can see that still it's this uh, red circle that has the highest probability of a win, but it's now been, been modified to, uh, to 53%. And if you use this other tree evaluation, you find a, an alternative solution and some other percentages. So if you just use the policy network, you get. Um, let me see if I understand that. Yeah, and then you actually uh, then you get you assign the highest uh, highest probability for the next action of being this uh, uh, red circle with a green inside that has 60% uh, probability, whereas our favorite move has only 35%. So that shows that that actually the policy network by itself makes uh, makes different solution make a different solution so uh, <clears throat> and e is a little bit detail about where uh, the tree search actually spends its time uh, in in searching for different moves and then in the f plot is uh, shows the actual uh, rollout of the play of AlphaGo against a human uh, player, a European champion, and you can see that um, that 
deep uh, the, the AlphaGo system eventually chose this uh, thing with the red circle and then as its next move so it's it's kind of suggestion for what white should play it puts this thing with the number one uh, what the European chairman actually chose was this uh, white uh, square so you can see that uh, that it there's a disagreement here between the computer and the human player and in the after discussion of the game where uh, AlphaGo eventually won then the human player acknowledged that actually it was a mistake by him to play the move uh, that he did and the better move was the one suggested by AlphaGo. So this concludes my uh, my example with AlphaGo.